This episode is part of the transformational podcast Systems in Motion. If you want to learn more about the leverage points, please listen to the opening episode. You are eager to get to know the woman behind the 12 leverage points and learn what these levers are about? Zepp has the answer for you. The 12 Leverage Points by Doniella Meadows. Hello and welcome. In this part of the compendium, I would like to give you an introduction into the 12 Leverage Points by Doniella Meadows. Doniella Meadows was an American scientist, university teacher, and author of books like Towards Global Equilibrium, Global Citizen, and Thinking in Systems. Together with her husband, Dennis L. Meadows, Jorgen Randers, William Behrens and others, she was one of the main authors behind the Limits of Growth report, published by the Club of Rome in 1972. The report states that exponential growth in population and economy will lead to a decline in resources and could have dramatic consequences for ecosystems and humanity. The highly influential paper was translated into more than 30 languages and is still discussed in today's academia and decision making. The report used the computer modeling technique World Free to simulate different scenarios for the development of the world and its citizens in the coming decades. It was among the first reports of its time using this complex computer simulation. Daniela Meadows received a PhD in biophysics at the University of Harvard and spent her life teaching and researching about the structure, behavior and adaptability of complex systems. In the early 90s, she got invited to the negotiations of the North American Free Trade Agreement. As one of the leading system analysts of the country, she should observe the process of establishing a new system of rules and laws to manage the US trade policy in the coming years. After observing the process for a few days, Meadows was shocked about the inadequate knowledge of the politicians being involved in the process. It's almost certainly an example of cranking the system in the wrong direction. It's aimed at growth, growth at any price. And the control measures these nice liberal folks are talking about to combat it, small parameter adjustments, weak negative feedback loops are way too punny. Suddenly, without knowing what was happening, I got up, marched to the flip chart, toast over a clean page and wrote down nine places to intervene in a system in increasing order of effectiveness. Everyone in the meeting blinked in surprise, including me. That's brilliant, someone breathed. Hmm, said someone else. I realized I had a lot of explanation to do. The explanation followed several years later with her 1999 published essay Leverage Points, Places to Intervene in a System Meadows tries to solve this problem by classifying leverage points which can be found in every system and gives explanations which ones are suitable for change and which ones are not. The example of the free trade agreement showed her that people often fail when it comes to either identifying possible points for leverage in a system or even worse, they have found a leverage point and try to change it in the wrong direction, making the whole situation worse instead of better. The growth at any price fallacy, in which not only the negotiators were trapped, but also vast parts of the economic and political world is a prime example, where less or different forms of economic growth could be a useful leverage point for changing an anthropogenic system, decision makers come up with the idea of everlasting growth without limits. The phenomena of finding a point with a huge potential for systemic change, but changing it in the wrong direction, 
is described by one of Meadows' teachers and godfathers of system thinking, Jay Forrester, in a single word, counterintuitive. Due to the counterintuitive nature of a complex system, many attempts to change the system fail with massive consequences. And even if it is managed by certain people to understand the system, the majority of the people will not trust them because their insights do not seem intuitive. In the following chapters, my colleagues and me would like to invite you to question your intuition. Inspired by Doniella Meadows, we want to take a look into the systems we are living in. We want to show that change can happen in many ways and that it needs an understanding of all leverage points from the change of a number up till the change of a paradigm to manage global change effectively. Before we start to dig deeper into the topic, you will hear the 12 leverage points and some examples where you can find them. Twelve parameters, constants, and numbers. Think of tax rates, the speed of light, or key performance indicators of a company. Numbers that only make sense in the context they are seen in. Eleven buffers, like the size of a water reservoir or your money on the bank, the extra padding that keeps you from running short. Ten stocks and flows, for example, the planning of a traffic system to keep traffic in a flow, rather than having it piled up in a traffic jam. 9. Delays. Think of the delays between working, writing an invoice and finally getting your money. 8. Negative feedback loops, like a thermostat regulating your room temperature to a specific threshold. 7. Positive feedback loops. For example, the spread of a virus in a reinforcing manner. 6. Information flow. Think of the specific information which is needed by each member of a team in order to perform well. 5. Rules. Like trade policies that define the frame of interaction between market participants. 4. Self-organization. For example, the forest ecosystem reorganizing itself after a fire or a massive attack by bark beetles. 3. The goal of the system. Think of an organization's vision which determines the purpose of actions to fulfill this vision. 2. The shift of a paradigm. Like Copernicus changing the mindset from geocentric to heliocentric and its massive implications on society and religion. 
1. The power to transcend. Think, or rather not think, of the power of giving up maybe even useful beliefs for a bigger and broader picture. Like not sticking to your thoughts in a meditation.